One of the most impressive aircraft ever created, the Boeing B-29 Superfortress is a colossal piece of engineering. It's awe-inspiring, and was a four-engine propeller-driven heavy bomber, which was used during the Second World War and the Korean War. It was known as a devastating and deadly bomber, which would drop off a huge payload of bombs onto a target. Its predecessor, the B-17 Flying Fortress, was a very good aircraft in its own right, but the Super Fortress was a beast. It was very effective when it was used for a high-altitude strategic bombing, but also was very good for nighttime bombing raids, when incendiary bombs would be dropped. In the Pacific during the Second World War, it was used to drop naval mines to blockade the Japanese. It's best known for being the type of aircraft that dropped the atom bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, ultimately bringing the Second World War to an end. But in a beautiful part of the English countryside in the Peak District, an area known for hills and sadly plane crashes, there are the remains of one B-29 Superfortress that crashed shockingly on the hills, killing all of the crew. The specific aircraft known as Overexposed itself was a historic plane, but today scattered wreckage can be found all over the hillside from the deadly crash. Join us today as we look at this, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. The final mission of Overexposed, the B-29 Superfortress, would take place on the 3rd of November 1948. As an aircraft, it had a very interesting story, and although the Superfortress is known for being a bombing aircraft, it was equipped as a photographic reconnaissance aircraft. Overexposed was fitted with extra fuel tanks and state-of-the-art cameras, which would photograph large areas of land. It was built at Renton, Washington, and was equipped with these cameras in the five gun turrets, and the aircraft came into service just before the Second World War would come to an end. But one of its most important roles in history was accompanying another superfortress named Dave's Dream. The aircraft took off from its base in the Marshall Islands, and was involved in Operation Crossroads. This was where the US conducted a couple of nuclear weapons tests at Bikini Atoll, and these were the first nuke detonations since the end of the Second World War. The tests were the first in a series, and were also the first to be viewed by an audience, who were invited to see the proceedings. The first bomb was dropped by Dave's Dream, and Overexposed was then tasked with taking photographs of the explosion, using the 25 cameras that were on board. They took pictures of the bomb leaving the aircraft and also the aftermath of the explosion. But following this, on the 25th of July 1946, it was also used to take images of an underwater bomb test. But Overexposed's role in history did not stop at just photographing explosions. In 1948, the Russians isolated and cut off the Allied sector of Berlin by severing the road links, and there was a worry as to how to resupply Allied forces, and also the people of Berlin. Because of this, the Berlin airlift took place, and the only way to supply the people of West Berlin was through aircraft dropping supplies into the city. The B-29, overexposed during this mission, flew alongside a variety of other aircraft, and they dropped supplies such as food and other necessities. Following the drops, it then used the cameras again to photograph Russian territory, and to carry out recon whilst being disguised with supply planes. So foreign aircraft overexposed had a good history after the Second World War, and was considered one of the most trusted American aircraft. But on the 3rd of November 1948, during a seemingly routine trip, tragedy would strike the aircraft, and all of the men on board. Close to the town of Warrington in the north of England in Lancashire, there was a large American airbase named Burtonwood, which transferred into US Army Air Force hands in 1942. It was used during the Second World War heavily, and was a busy base where there was activity also after the conflict. Another air base in England is RAF Scampton, based in Lincolnshire. It is best known for being home to the Red Arrows, but in 1948 it was where B-29 Superfortresses were as part of a network of emergency war plan airfields. Scampton was the best place for these bombers, and it was where Overexposed was based. Scampton was a tiny base compared to the size of Burton Wood, and often all mail or post and also wages for aircrew was sent through to Burton Wood. So because of this, there are often a number of resupply flights made to the airbase from airfields all around the UK to bring supplies back from Burton Wood. These missions were no risk, and were considered straightforward flights. It was on the 3rd of November 1948 that Overexposed went on one of these routine and straightforward missions. There was no need for a full crew, but for a day out and a little excitement and pleasure, on board were a total personnel of 13 men, 
Many of these, as said, were not needed on board. At the time, RAF Scampton was poorly supplied and post-war rationing was still in place in the UK. But at Burtonwood it was seen as a land of milk and honey, as it had everything that an American airman would want, including good food and supplies. So the men went on board overexposed for some time away, probably from their duties and also from Scampton, which was rather isolated and quiet. The 13 on board overexposed would try to make the quick 25-minute flight to Burtonwood without any issue. But on the day of the flight, the weather was rather poor. The cloud base was lower than 2,000 feet, which was not as straightforward as it could be for this flight. The Superforce just took off from RAF Scampton at 10.15am, and on board were 13 members of the Air Force, and also American Air Force wages, and other objects which needed to be taken to the base. The crew on board were also supposed to return to America in a number of days, so they were probably excited by this, and were probably in a good mood. Due to the low cloud level, the Superfortress flew low at ground level over the moors, and the pilot relied on his altitude meter to guide the aircraft safely. But in England, the Peak District is mountainous, and made up of a number of peaks and high areas of land. It has a number of high peaks around 600 metres high, and often the terrain is very boggy at the top of these areas. On board overexposed, it's likely the people on board were very happy, and were thinking of the lovely hot meal they would get at Burtonwood, but they never made it to the American airbase, as tragedy would strike. Around 30 minutes after setting off, B-29 Superfortress overexposed would crash into the ground on one of the peaks in the Peak District, specifically Bleaklow, and every person on board was killed by the crash. There is still an element of mystery as to what specifically happened on board the reliable aircraft, and it's not known why the captain on board flew the aircraft into the ground where he did. Captain Landon Tanner had no need to be flying below 2,000 feet where he was in the Peak District, and he was around 7 minutes from beginning his descent into Burton Wood, so with this overexposed was flying too low when it wasn't needed to be. Tanner had also been briefed on the conditions of the flight before takeoff, and also over the radio from officials at Burton Wood, so he knew the risks and also the problems with the weather. The wreckage of overexposed was found at a height on Bleaklow at 2,007 feet. Another possible cause of the deadly crash was that there could have been a problem with the altitude meter on board the aircraft, and also that the plane got lost and suffered problems with navigation. Over the Peak District and specifically on that day, the wind was also very strong and was on the nose of the plane. This could have caused a headwind that would have left the navigator confused by his calculations, and it's possible that the navigator informed the captain that he was approaching Burtonwood sooner than he actually was, and this is possibly why the captain may have begun his descent and then crashed into the peak. As it failed to arrive at the American airbase, quickly in the afternoon a search for the aircraft was scrambled, and in the afternoon the burning wreck and smoke from overexposed was spotted high on the peak of Bleaklow. A local RAF mountain rescue unit had been carrying out a training exercise two miles away, and as they saw the smoke they went to investigate. They were greeted by the sight of the huge aircraft wreck on fire, and there were parts all over the peak. The wreckage was spread over a large distance, where today many of the parts still remain. Smoke and fire was everywhere, but there was nothing that could be done to save the crew on board. Those 13 men who boarded the aircraft, dreaming of their hot meal and relaxing afternoon at Burtonwood, never made it, and were killed instantly when the plane flew into the peak. Found around the wreckage was also £7,000 of wages for many of the airmen, and also other items meant to go to the American airbase. Those men who were killed on board the B-29 Superfortress overexposed were pilot Landon P. Tanner, co-pilot Captain Harry Stroud, engineer technical sergeant Ralph Fields, navigator sergeant Charles Wilbanks, radio operator sergeant general A. Gartner, and radio operator David T. Moore. Also on board the aircraft were technical sergeant Saul R. Banks, sergeant Donald R. Abragast, Sergeant Robert I. Doyle and Private First Class William M. Burrows. Additional crew on board were Corporal M. Franson, Corporal George Ingram and Captain Howard Keel. When the search team got to the wreckage, it was clear very quickly that no one had survived, and all of the bodies of the men were recovered from the wreckage. The wreckage of B-29 overexposed can still be seen and visited today. By walking around the peak of Bleaklow, you can take in the sheer size of the catastrophe, and you'll see the aircraft parts are scattered over a huge area. 
Sadly, in the 1970s, a walker on the peak found a wedding ring at the crash site, and this was Captain Tanner's wedding band, which was then returned to his daughter. A memorial marks the site of the wreckage, and is in the middle, near to where some engines are found, and it's also close to landing gear, where shockingly part of a tyre can still be seen. But the story of overexposed, an aircraft with a very interesting history, following the Second World War, ends with a very tragic chapter. The final mission they undertook should have been an easy one, and one which was straightforward, but a number of catastrophic errors led to the deaths of 13 crew members. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.